Hi everyone, my name is Mark Munkins from Big Mountain Studio. I'm here in Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. And here you see Lower Falls. This is known as the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. Keep watching and I hope you enjoy the video. Bye. Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins from Big Mount Studio. If you're interested in learning iOS development, consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon down below so you get notified when new videos about iOS development come out. We are continuing with the itinerary app series and building an app. And so far, we have a pop-up that allows us to add data. So now we want to create our data operations so we can create new trips and have our list of trips update as well. In this video, you'll be learning about how to create a callback function in your pop-up so your pop-up can execute some custom code after the user taps the save button. So let's take a look at our tasks and our project. We finished the UI work for our pop-up and now we wanted to do the data work. So I'm just going to move that over here. And again, I'm using Bitbucket to keep track of all my tasks. It has this handy boards function down here that I turned on and which is basically using Trello. Now I want to explain to you the overall concept before we jump into coding. We have our trips view controller that will be shown first. From here, we tap an add button, which shows the user our add trips pop-up. This part is already done and coded. What we want to do is after we're done adding the new trip through the pop-up, we want to save it to our data store. Then after that, we want to reload our table view of trips. So the new trip that we just added is going to be shown. So how are we going to do this? Well, there are a few different ways. And if you've watched my series on reusable pop-ups, you know that I've described three ways on how to do this in the past. But in this app, we're going to use callbacks. The way callbacks work in this case is in the add trips view controller, we will have a place where code can be assigned, which is a callback function. Then we will pass that code to be run after the save occurs. And that code just says, reload the table view because we want to show the new data. So the first thing I want to do is I want to implement this callback function that I'm talking about. And I want to make sure that it is called when the user taps the save button on the pop-up. So what we're going to do is go into the project and we're just going to add the callback function for now and execute it just to test it. And then once that is working, we'll work on actually adding the data to our data store and showing it in the trips list. Okay, we're back in our project where we left off after creating our new pop-up. So this is our new pop-up. If you haven't seen that video yet, go back and watch how we created this pop-up first. And looking over at the project here, I noticed there's a lot of the symbols here where files have been modified or added or renamed. You know, usually it's, they label them as renamed when you move them to a different directory. We didn't actually rename those files. So what I want to do first before we continue is I actually want to commit these changes. So as I code new things, and if I make a mistake, I can easily revert all those changes without affecting what I know is already working. I'm going to commit this. And if you remember from my source control videos earlier in this series, I can hold down command option and then click C for commit. Or if you can't remember the command option C, you just come to source control up here and click commit. And I always push it to remote. I don't have a branch because I'm the only one working on it. And I see some things that aren't selected here, so I just want to make sure everything is selected. That looks good. And let's see, for a message, I'll just say add trips UI work. Okay, and we'll just commit those and push them. All right, good. So what I mentioned before was we need to create a callback function. So I'm going to go into my view controller here. And when I say callback function, Basically what I mean is, it's just a property and the property holds what? It holds a function. So how do you create a property that holds a function? Well, you do it like this. Use var, because you're declaring a variable. And for the property name, I'm just going to call it done saving, like that. And then what type do I give it? Well, in order to give a variable a type of a function, it's pretty easy. I'm going to use parentheses, and then for a function, you simply define the input parameters, and then you define what is going to be returned. And this can be anything. So maybe I have a function where I pass in a string, or maybe I have a function where I return a, an integer. So I just name it like that. But I don't have anything 
that I'm passing in and I don't have anything that I'm returning, so I'm going to leave those parts blank. And I'm also going to add a question mark. So if nothing is assigned to done saving, it'll be nil. All right, good. Now what do I do with it? Well, when save is called, I want to call done saving. I want to call this function up here. Now notice, you know, I don't define what code goes into this function right here. So in this view controller, this view controller isn't going to be responsible for adding code or setting a function to done saving. It's actually going to be my trips view controller, the main screen that's going to be responsible for adding that code. So all this view controller is concerned with is just calling whatever code is passed in or set to done saving. So he's just going to execute it here. Now there's one thing I need to do first because this done saving is optional, right? It has that question mark. So it can be nil. So what I need to do first is I need to check to see if done saving actually has any code set to it, if it has a value set to it, you know, like a function. So I'm going to check it first. I'm going to say if let done saving equals done saving, then execute it. Done saving. <laughs> so basically this is a variable and what this if let does is if this has a value it's going to assign it to this variable which is non-optional and so if it's non-optional it'll actually come into this line and execute this variable which is a function or whatever code is set to it okay good so this part is done and again if this is confusing to you you know what this whole thing is this callback function or variables that can be assigned with a type of a function if that's confusing to you or you're not familiar with it watch one of my previous videos where I talk about creating callbacks and I explain more and I go into more detail as far as like what this is I'll provide links you should see an eye icon up in the upper right hand corner of this video you can click on that and go to it or also look in the video description down below I'll try to remember to add links I have a couple of videos that describe this more in detail okay so it's it's going to be this view controller that's going to be responsible for adding code or assigning code to that callback function to get called. So how do you do that? Well, there's some code that we can kind of intercept and respond to before we go to our pop-up. So let me explain it to you by looking at the storyboard. This is a segue. And when you click this button down here, it's going to open up our view controller. Well, we can create a function that when you click on this button, like as it's going to the view controller, we can intercept it and look at it and then say, you know, hey, uh, if you're going to go to this view controller, here are some extra things I want to do before you do that, before you navigate to that view controller. So one of the things I need to do is I need to identify this segue because there might be many segues coming off of this view controller. And I want to be able to specify this particular segue. So I'll just say this is going to my add trip view controller and I'll just, I just call it segue and this is my own convention I say two and I end it with segue so this is good enough for me to remember I'm going to copy that because I'm going to use it in my code and so we need to look at that segue function I was just telling you about and it's actually called prepare and it's this one right here so prepare to go to a segue and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at which segue we're going to. And if you notice, we have a segue control here, a variable or a parameter that's being passed in. So that is actually what has all the information that I need. I want to look at the identifier property and I'm going to check what it is. To add trip segue. So if it's the to add trip segue, then I know I'm going to my add pop-up. And again, this identifier property, like if we come back to our pop-up here and we select your segue, you know, notice this says identifier. That's the, that's the property I'm checking. All right, good. So now what I need to do is get an instance of my pop-up and the segue has that, the set, that segue parameter has that information. So I'm going to say pop-up, create a variable, pop-up. And I'm going to look at the segue again. And here it has a destination. And notice the type is UI view controller. So that is my pop-up. And I'm going to specify which type which 
type of view controller it is. I'm just basically going to say it is an add trip view controller. All right, good. Because what I need to do is I need to access that property, the done saving property, and this is our callback function. And then I'm going to assign it a function. Now, I could create a regular function and then assign it. You know, like I could create a function down here called done saving that doesn't accept any parameters, doesn't return any parameters like that. And I could say, yeah, set this to done saving. And I could just add code here if I wanted to. But there's a shorthand way of doing that where we can just do it right here. And that's it. We just apply a couple of curly braces and I can just set the code right here. So it's kind of like an inline function. And after done saving occurs, what do I want to do? I want to refresh my table view, right? Or I want to reload that table view data. So I'm going to say self dot table view dot reload data like that. Okay, so that should work fine. Now, if any of you have seen my Swift memory mastery series, you may be remembering at this point, whoa, there might be something missing here that you need to do <laughs> that could potentially be a memory leak. So let's fix that. And basically, but the reason why it could be a memory leak is I'm passing in this whole view controller here. Self is actually this view controller. So I'm passing in this whole view controller into this other view controller here, the add trips view controller. And if I click dismiss and I try to dismiss it, it might not be able to dismiss it from memory because add trips view controller is referencing this view controller, this trips view controller. Now it should work without it because uh, I'm not storing or holding on to this pop up, but later I might be. So anyway, it's just a good practice to change the self to uh, a weak variable. So there's no chance of there being a future problem with memory. It's just kind of like a good practice to get into. Again, it's not required, but it's a good practice to follow. Okay, and so we're passing this in. Yeah, so it's gonna be optional. Let's fix that. Meaning it could be nil, depending on when the code is run, but most likely it won't be. All right, great. So let's just test that and make sure it's working. I'm going to set a breakpoint here and I want to know when the reload is done. And remember, it should only reload when we hit save and not cancel. Because if we look at our code real quick, notice I'm only calling done saving on save and not cancel. So let's go back here. Oh, this is from the other project. Let's close that. So I'm going to pretend I'm adding a trip and I click save and it hits my breakpoint. Okay, so we know our callback is working, right? So we know our callback is actually working at this point and it's going to refresh or reload the data in the table view. So that's perfect. Everything is working great and that's what we want. Okay, now it's time for the next step. We have our callback set up and everything is working correctly. Let's actually save the trip to our data store. And the first thing we'll need to do is we'll actually have to go into our data model and make sure there's code there to add this trip. So let's go into our model and let's go into our trip and let's look at our trip functions here. And we have no code for our create trips and this is where we actually want to create the data. So if this is looking unfamiliar to you, then you'll have to go back and rewatch the video where we created this model and our trip functions. Basically all of our data right now is being stored in this data class right here. It's pretty simple, it's just a static variable, which means any data we add, it's not gonna persist. You know, if we close the app and bring it back up, then our new trip will be gone. But for the purposes of, of this demo, of this tutorial or this series, uh, we're not gonna get into all the different data stores that you can use. So I'm basically using a variable that's just temporarily in memory. And we want to add our data to that. So in the future, I might come out with another series where we go into using different types of data stores and then we'll just replace this code in here to access core data or who knows, Firestore, Couchbase. But for now, uh, we're not going to do that. So what do I wanna do? I have my data and I have trip models and I just want to append data to it. I want to append a new trip model. Whoops, I want to append whatever's passed in basically. So it's pretty simple, right? We're going to create a trip, we're going to pass in a model, and if we look at our trip model, we're just going to pass in an instance of this. It'll have 
an ID and, and basically a title. So very, very simple. Now we actually have to call this function right here, this create trips, right? So let's go back into our add trips view controller and let's look at our save and let's just call it create trips. Here we go. And here we want to pass in a trip model, but we need to instantiate it first, right? And pass in the title. So the title will be whatever is in that text field. So trip text field dot text. This will create a new trip model. It'll pass it in. And let's see, what's the problem here? Uh, okay. Yeah, so let's fix that. So this value can have a nil, but we're kind of guaranteeing that it won't have a nil. Now, normally what you'd want to do in this case is you want some data validation to make sure there's something in there first, right? Before you call this function. Uh, in this video, we're not going to cover that, but that's actually going to be a future video. It might actually be the next video that I create. Uh, let me take a look real quick. Yeah, it is. I just looked at the, the outline and that is the next video. We're going to be talking about how to show images in the text field after, you know, when you validate the data. And if, if there's no data in there, then I'm going to show an icon in the text field. All right, good. So this looks fine. Let's run it and make sure it works. Okay. We want to add a new one and we'll say this is a Canadian trip and we'll save it. And there it is. So it got added and I think we're all set. All right, good. So this looks fine. And again, it's just stored temporarily, right? I'm not persisting the data. So if I click here and I delete that and we run the app again, you know, the Canadian trip isn't going to be there because we're not persisting it. The only reason why these are persisted is because earlier when we created these trip functions, I uh, wanted to mock up some data to always show because we, you know, we had to have some data to style the cells. That's the only reason why these persisting is because <laughs> I'm creating them every time I run the app. Okay, guys, in this video, you learned how to create a callback function in your pop-up. So your pop-up can execute some custom code after the user tapped the save button. If you want to respond to something happening in a pop-up, you can first create a function definition in that pop-up. Then you call that function after some action has taken place in your pop-up. The view controller that opens the pop-up supplies the code to be run. And that's what we did. Our list of trips is actually the view controller that supplied the code that it wants run, which is basically, hey, refresh my table view after you're done saving. Okay, if you like this video, click on that like button down below. Feel free to share this video with your friends or colleagues, such as on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn. And if you subscribe and click the bell icon, you'll get notified when that next video comes out where we'll be talking about data validation. And if you'd like to help out my channel or help out this video, you can always supply a translation in your native language. So say if you're from Spain, you can translate the, just the title in the description in Spanish and then save it and I'll review it and approve it. And that'll help people who speak Spanish more easily find my video. All right, thanks guys.